Well, hello everybody. I hope you guys are doing great. This is Mary at Yard Art R Us. I'm going to be finishing Uncle Sam tonight. I actually already have him base coated, and uh, I'm going to be working on finishing him up. I think I have a, already have a sample over there, and I'll show you in just a minute. But I'm Windexing this, y'all, because hey Kim, how are you? Windexing because this has been a little bit since I painted it. Here's what, uh, hold on a second. Here's what it's going to look like tonight when we're done. In case, I've been putting photos up and a lot of y'all seen the photos, but I'll be finishing him tonight. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing some shading on this guy and highlighting and outlining because he's already base coated. Hey, Debbie, how are you? I got two Debbies on here, Debbie and Debbie. How are y'all doing? And hi, Carolyn. Uh, Debbie Barberi, if you could, could you post the, um, see if you can get the link for the Academy and also this for the blanks, because I've had people asking, do we uh, sell blanks? And uh, I posted a lot of that, I mean, I answered a lot of questions today about Uncle Sam, which is a good thing. And uh, so I, I, right now I just have what I call beard blue. And to me, what makes Uncle Sam look really good is his beard. And the fact that we gave him some hands to kind of, you know, give him almost that human characteristic look. And uh, if you'll do some shading on the beard, that'll go a long way, I think, in making your project look really good. If y'all watch us, for those that watch us quite a bit, you know that Ashley and I both are all about the shading. And uh, it takes a little bit of a time to get that technique down, but uh, it's like anything else. You'll get it. So I am just doing... And I have come up under here like so. Let me look at what I did over there. Okay, y'all. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm kind of keeping it the same. Just a, just a little bit of brush stroking here. And I haven't been on this live but a couple of minutes. And I'm already done with shading the white, the beard, and the cuffs of the suit. But you can see what a difference that makes. Hey, Tammy. How are you? And I'm glad to see. Uh, is it Crystal? How are you? And Jerry. I am uh, shading tonight, and that's something that um, we do. Ashley and I do a lot of shading. It's just kind of our style. And uh, we have tutorials set up at yardartacademy.com if you join the academy just for shading. Because that's one of those that a lot of people, it's going to take them a little bit of practice. But once you get it, you get it, right? And uh, I'm really excited. I know I've talked about this before, but in October... I uh, am going to a one-stroke class. It's couple, it's about six hours from my house, but I'm super excited the fact that I get to go learn something. Um, one-stroke is really big in the painting world. I've never had any training, but I'm really excited about the fact that I'm going to get to go, and it's in October. I'm really looking forward to it because no matter how long you paint it, no matter what you do, my attitude is there's always something you can learn, right? Always something. Hey, sis, my Connie, my sis is on here. That's Connie. Hey, Sherry. Uh, I'm glad y'all are here. And um, so I'm excited to go be the pupil and get to learn something that I really don't know much about. And um, I hope, y'all, I hope, no matter how long I live, I never, ever want to get uh, where I feel like I know it all because I don't. I always want to be learning something. And uh, so I'm going to go learn to do the one stroke. And it's really a pretty blended shaded look that I've never, I've never done before. So I've got my flat tip brush here, right? And I'm just kind of making some shading is what I call it up against that red using some um, shading red. And all this is, y'all, is some red with some black mixed in. I mix, I just mix it, that's all it is. So if you don't have shading red, just get you some red, put a little black in it, till you get it the color you want, and you're good to go. All right, so my little Uncle Sam, gotta give him a little red, white, and blue, um, look if you will yeah let's put it like this hey baby how are you and let's see connie says i can't wait till you teach us the one stroke i know 
Well, I'm really excited to learn it because um, I don't think it'll be too, too hard, but it's like, it's like you get another tool in your little chest of tricks, so to speak. And that's a good thing. And plus, it's a couple of days away from home in the normal routine. <laughs> I love what I do, but it doesn't hurt getting out of the normal routine sometimes. Now, I'm just putting some of the uh, shading red on almost it, on everything that's red on this piece, y'all. And when you do that, you can just, as y'all watch me, I think you'll see this piece will just kind of have a different, it takes on a totally different look than when you don't have any shading on here. And it doesn't take that long. You just kind of practice and practice. And you'll get it. And on the flag, I'm only going to shade this bottom of the stripe because this flag is that's not that large, so I'm not going to uh, shade the top and the bottom of the red stripe. I'm only doing it at the bottom. Because if you start shading all of it, then you lose up what red you have, and you don't want to lose all your red. That'll, that'll make it too crazy. All right, and just done with the red. Okay. So I've shaded, just in the little bit of time I've been on here, I've shaded the white, the red, and the flesh. Now let's do the blue. I've got a brilliant blue on here, that's what we call it. And this is a navy. So there's not a lot of blue on here. I'm going to do this. And then I will be ready to outline. See how easy this is? Of course, I already had him base coated before I came on. Because last night I did a bunch of base coat on some pieces, so y'all get the idea. I think it was Nan that said last night, hey, I gotta start putting more paint on my base coat. Yeah, I put a lot of paint on the base coat. And um, this navy blue is what I will use to shade that brilliant blue, but it's also what I use to outline the beard. So just because we call it a shading color doesn't mean you can't use it for something else. You use it for whatever you like. We just gave it names for shading because that's what we use it for most of the time. Not all the time. Mary Jo, how are you? And Jerry's here. What number brush am I using? That's a good question. This is a number 12. It's a flat tip brush. It's a number 12, so it's not a really big brush. And really, your brush size is just going to depend on the size of your project. That's really all it is. And so this is not a big, not a big project, y'all. I do big projects like an eight foot nutcracker. That's big to me. So I'm using I, over here on the side. Y'all really can't see it. I just have some of my shader, my flat tip brushes, and some script liners, and that way they're sitting right here. And I just pick them up and move to the next color. Ginger, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I know sometimes when I come live, people don't get to see me because depending on their schedules and stuff. But isn't he cute? I love him too. And he's he says uh, he's there in the shop, Ginger, as a um, a blank or a template, whatever you want, if you want to do it. So I have this uh, navy, and I'm just kind of going in here with my script liner and making some outlines. Right, and while I have that brush in my hand, I'll just kind of go and drag that brush and give it some color right along that beard blue too. Something like that. And again, I don't worry about trying to be real perfect. That's not my style, it's not my thing. So um, my stuff is not in any way, shape or form perfect. I'm just outlining that beard right along that beard blue shading in between the on that CNC line. Kind of dragging that paint where I want it to go. Okay. Now while I have this in here, I will probably just go ahead and give this a little bit more dark blue there. And a little bit, just a little bit of dark blue right along here. Just kind of giving it some more color. You can't really tell a lot and it doesn't take me a lot of time. Okay, now I'll put the blue right here on that white cuff. So my go-to color on a cuff like this, and you'll see me do this a lot on Santa Clauses, is your white cuff, your beard blue shading, and your navy blue outline. I'm not saying that's the only way you can do it, but that's kind of what I like. It's my go-to on Santas a lot. 
I just take that brush and lay it down on top of that CNC line until I get the right amount of paint. So I've outlined all the blue I want to do. Now I'm going to wash that out over here in water a little bit. And y'all, I'm already ready for the black on the outline. That's it. Okay, I'm going to pull this a little bit closer to me because he's a little bit further away from me than what is comfortable. And I will hit the bottom of that uh, little two ounce cup. I hit it pretty hard with my brush to get me some paint on there. And the thing about doing your outlining, I think, is the fact that it gives you a boundary. You had, it, you're drawing a boundary right there between your two colors of your design. That's when it starts to look a little bit more finished and just a little bit more uh, pleasing to the eye, if you will. And um, it's all about outlining and making it look finished at this point. And while I have this, I'll just kind of drag that brush sometimes around my shading, whatever color that is. In this case, it happens to be um, navy blue. Okay. Hey, Pam. Ginger says, we're, well, well, I can tell, I hate that y'all are moving to Kansas because I know you're local, Ginger. I hope y'all are moving and that's what y'all want to do. Uh, hopefully that's a good thing. But yes, as far as uh, the windy conditions and all of that, the, your MDO is fine. Your paint is fine. But I will say, with the wind that y'all are going to have, the only concern you want to think about is whenever you are um, putting your stuff out for display. Your green channel stakes or whatever stakes that you use to display them, you know, to make them stand up out in the yard is what is gonna be your concern because the, it's not the wind and all that, you're not gonna hurt that MDO, uh, you're good on that. But what it will do and what I have seen, especially on like this guy, you see how this flag sticks out kind of over here to the side a little bit? I've seen it to where it'll, the wind will be so bad, you have a stake right here, right? I've seen it so bad, it'll put this flag and it'll start whipping that like this. And your green channel stake, believe it or not, I've seen them twirl. Whereas then they wind and they break. So that's what you're gonna, your concern is going to be. So what I would do to solve that uh, and what we do to help ourselves, there's a lot of designs. Like if you go to our store, Ginger, during, you know, especially when we have a lot of stuff out there, you will see anything that's very wide will have two stakes on it as opposed to just one. And the reason for that is this. When you have a, you know, you got a wide piece and you got a stake on the left and you got a stake on the right, that wind cannot take that yard art and twir twirl it around. It's not, it's gonna anchor it. So when you, if you go to our shop and you look at what we have out in the yard, if it's a very big piece or a very wide piece, we do two stakes. So, and, and I think in the windy conditions, that's what you're gonna be concerned about. So I'm gonna caution you and tell you to use more stakes than you normally would. And that way you won't have that problem. And I'll tell you, there's two designs that we've sold for years. We don't put two stakes on them because of the way the design is. And uh, we've had trouble with um, the stakes getting twirled around and breaking. And in that case, what we tell the customer is if they call and they say, hey, my stake is messed up, we just tell them, bring it back and we'll put another one on for you at no charge. That's how we handle that because there's two designs that we cannot put two stakes on because it just, it looks terrible because of the design. So try to put two stakes on things and you'll probably be fine. Okay, I'm taking my paintbrush, just putting some, basically some black paint to outline. Obviously that's, that's pretty much a no brainer. But while I have this brush in my fingers, a lot of times I will make sure I put a little bit of brush stroking on my shading. And that's the kind of thing that we talk about in the academy a lot, y'all, is just really the how-tos. How to how to make something look good. Or just like I was talking with Ginger, she's an academy member. What is she gonna do when she goes to Kansas? She's gonna put more stakes on stuff. If she's used to putting one and it's kind of wide, now she's gonna put two. Because if you don't, that wind will whip that thing right around. I'll just put some uh, with that way. I'm going to turn this around. Okay, I got my Lazy Susan because I cleaned my shop yesterday. 
It's like, man, how are you doing? Uh, good info, thank you. Yeah, Ginger, that's the only problem is the wind. It's your stakes. That, that's just, that's really the only thing you're going to have to deal with. The MDO is going to be fine. The paint is going to be fine. All of that's good. All of that is good. Y'all, sometimes it, it, it gets windy as all get out here. And we have to go out there and uh, we sell some wind spinners that we get from this company. Sometimes we have to go lay those wind spinners down because those wind spinners, the metal will snap. Because they're not, you know, they're really pretty to look at, but they're not what I would say industrial strength metal, you know. And y'all, the wind is just, sometimes it can be ferocious. Even here, we're, quote, you know, we don't really have that problem, so to speak. There we go. Now, while I have this brush in my hand, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And see, I'm just giving a little bit more character, putting those brush strokes in there. And it doesn't take already any time to do that because I already have the brush and I already have the paint on there. Now my hat, you want to make sure your hat's outlined really good, especially between the black, uh, the red and the white. Sometimes I have to water, I've watered this paint down to get that CNC line to cover really good. A lot of black paint but you can just tell how good this hat looks just in the little time I've been on this video doing my shading and my outlining I'm putting a lot of black there just kind of going back and forth and then I'll come do this one back and forth and notice my whole body's moving isn't it I don't treat my uh, script liner like a pencil I don't act like I'm trying to write Writing and painting are real different, y'all. I treat this script liner as an extension of my whole arm, not just my hands or my fingers. There you go, got that hat, looks good. I think it looks, you know, part of what makes him cute is the beard, but the hat makes him look good too. So I'm gonna come in here. Got a little bit of a flying flag. Notice I just kind of go back and forth on that C and C line until I get it covered the way I want. There you go. And because the you know this is a small flag, just kind of I, I'm not putting as much paint on this brush and making this uh, outline as thick as I would something else. I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative. And notice my body is just going back and forth. I'm just trying to get that paint down in there. There we go. Almost done, y'all. Now, I've got my stars here. I'm going to do those in white. Do yourself a favor, like I said on the video last night. Don't try to outline your stars. Just put white paint on the stars and let it go with that. I'm gonna come up here and get a black brush stroke here. There we go. Okay. I think I'm good. I'm gonna take my white and I'm just washing out this uh, script liner with the black paint. Uh, when it is bad in West Texas, <laughs> Kansas too. Yeah, it can, and you know, you don't think of the wind as being harmful, and really in yard art it's not, unless you're talking about the stake and, and the way you have it displayed. No, it can, it can mess it up. Hey Mary Kay, how are you? I'm glad you're here. I, uh, I noticed that you had bought a ticket to go to the paint party with that truck, and we have been selling tickets to the truck pretty good like. And that's not till, what, October? I can't remember exactly when it is. Yep, I'm doing, and that's all I would do here. I would not try to outline this star because it's going to be a, it's so little, and you don't need to outline it. It's going to look good just the way it is right there. And I just kind of go to each point like that. Notice the point of my star. 
And once I get my points all filled out, then I just kind of come in here and do it in the middle. I'm just joining those points together. That's all I'm doing. And then once the stars are finished, y'all, it's just a matter of making sure I do a lot of highlights because y'all know I like highlights. And then tomorrow he's ready to be staked and he will go out in the yard at the store for sale. For sale, for sale. Do my five points. And here we go. I've had a number of people buy the template for this guy. And we sold some blanks too. So I know some of you guys are planning on cutting your own. That's a great way. October 8th. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. Don't you, Tracy? That's Sheba's over here laying down and Ellie Mae's over here looking at her. I don't think they can decide if they're ready to come in for the night, but they got out and Paula had to go chase them. I didn't know they were out. And of course, they were out in the woods behind the house. Paula was chasing them, but we got them back. I, I somehow we left the gate open, y'all. I, I don't know how that happened. We live a, in an older house with a big yard. It's got like an apartment gate. And so, you know, we go in and out with that gate. And then uh, sometimes we might forget, we've been known to forget to close the gate and the dogs escape. We have to be careful with that. All right, well, I have this white. Hey, Kitty, how are you? Now, Kitty, I'm gonna be doing a whole series in the Academy on um, stenciling in June. So make sure you catch that and watch that because I know you sell yard art. It's a good way to, an easy way to, to make stuff real quick. And um, for those of you that sell it. Now, while I have this, I'm gonna just take this and kind of do some dragging of some, I call it dragging, right? And all I'm doing is just putting some white. I will kind of come up here on my cheeks and on the nose. And I'm, I'm gonna put dots in there because I always have dots of white on that black but I can't do it right now because the black is so dark. It's so uh, uh, wet, wet is what I meant to say. And it's dark too. So I'm gonna come in here and I just put some brush strokes. Where do I put brush strokes? I just put brush strokes wherever I see the base color that doesn't have a lot of paint on it, where there's not a lot of shading or outline is where I put my highlights. It's pretty, pretty easy. All right, got all that, got all that. Okay, come down here my sand a little bit and then I'm gonna move this where y'all can see the feet. So the guy here has, let's see what I did over here. I'm gonna make sure I did it the way I'm supposed to be doing the pattern calls for. Y'all I've been known to kind of make, make up my own pattern because I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> okay here we go and he's gonna have something like that and he's gonna have something like that and to me the secret of black shoes like this is uh, when I have black shoes uh, I don't put a lot of white on there okay less is better now y'all see I put a lot of white everywhere but you start putting a lot of white on this then it loses and it to me it doesn't look good it loses its uh, its quality of being sparse I guess is what I'm trying to say uh, I'm trying to remember, I used to do a bunch of characters. I think they were elves that had black hair and they were curly, right? And everybody want, that I would teach to paint, they would want to start putting a lot of white on that black. No, just a little bit. I don't have a lot here and that looks good. Can't wait to learn more on stenciling. I've done some, but always need some tricks. Yes, uh, I built most of my um, Christmas that I sold because I you know I, I think most of y'all know I taught school for a long time. Uh, I didn't stop teaching until 2015. And so for years I painted on the side on, in the summer and you know nights and weekends and stuff like that. And so I started buying stenciling because I just did not have the time to painstakingly do things with lettering for Merry Christmas. I don't know how many times you know you can say Merry Christmas on something, but um, I remember the very first stencil I bought said pumpkin patch, and I bought it the year we bought this house in 2002. And I still either, I, I sent some to Kitty or I still have it. So imagine pumpkin patch. How many impressions of the words pumpkin patch did I use from 2002 to what is this, 2022? Is that 20 years? Oh, geez. 
20 years because they're mylar stencils they're gonna last forever and so <clears throat> if you take care of them and I will be doing a tutorial and showing you who I use to get them to cut I don't cut my own mylar stencils I don't really have the equipment for that we have equipment that could do it but our equipment is so um, I guess you could say we rely on it so much I don't want to use it for something it's really not designed to do it's just cheaper for me to go to an outsource and get it done and so I would lay you know I did a bunch of pumpkins down here and it had a sign right and I, I would just do pumpkin patch and for years I'm probably made 20 or 30 of those every year and I did it for 20 years so I mean it's a good way to make money but you do have to make sure you take care of your stencils and I always hung them up on uh, uh, what do you call it uh, call it clothes hangers with those little pin with the little clips and put them in a spare closet they were there I just put I moved on the storage last year but that's where they were for years so I'll be doing a whole thing on that probably about four tutorials in June on stenciling and uh, I would encourage those of you that are selling uh, or you're just making multiples to really pay attention to that I'll give you my source and you can get a cut if you want to at, you know it's 10 bucks 20 bucks 30 bucks depends on how big you get I'm gonna do some little stencils and I'm gonna do some big stuff um, and that way y'all you know it's an option for those of you that are selling so hey Brian how are you I finished my Uncle Sam now that I got through I did some jibber jawing do y'all know what jibber jawing is that's just where you talk a lot okay so there's my Uncle Sam the only thing I have left is I gotta put some white dots in his eyes but other than that he's ready to go He's cute. I'll put, a, I'll put a really good picture on here tomorrow once he's dry because I, I don't have a really good picture of him on there because I think I saw some of you guys are trying to sell him. So anyway, thanks for hanging out. Isn't he cute? I love him. I hope you're doing well and uh, you're in Crystal Beach or you're in Galveston. I can't remember. I know you're down there somewhere. But make sure you stop by and see us when you come to Pearland again. Uh, what about his other hand? Let me show you. I mean this one? That's that hand. And that's that one. I think that's what you're talking about. All right. Y'all have a good one. If you're thinking about joining the Academy, Crystal Beach. That's what I thought. I knew you were down there somewhere. Uh, the Academy closes Friday night or Saturday night. I can't remember. We will see y'all later. I think Debbie put in the comments if you want to buy a blank or a template. They're available. Thanks for hanging out. And I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.